dedicated, obsessed, focused. This is the Masters of Fitness Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Masters of Fitness Podcast episode nine. We are nine episodes in, and today we're going to do something a little different for you guys. If you're not not aware of it or you're not in the CrossFit community, we got the 2019 CrossFit Games coming up. So we decided to use some of our expertise to bring you guys some a little preview of the games so you can kind of get a better understanding of what goes on and how this whole CrossFit season works. So we got a good buddy, Nick Swashenberg, who decided to join the show today to kind of give some of his knowledge. And Nick, tell a little people about yourself, man. What you got going yeah, on? Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me on. Couldn't uh, be more excited to be on here and talk a little bit about this. Uh, something I've been doing for a couple of years now. Started actually back in um, 15, to that late 14, early 15. Got into it. Um, worked out for probably about a year and a half, almost two years. Hurt my knee uh, not in CrossFit. It was outside of CrossFit, actually closing a door. Kind of took Closing a, a door. Yeah, I turned and snapped my meniscus, popped right out. A little injury. Had surgery on it. Um, kind of took a little break for a while. Thought I could do uh, just regular gym stuff, trying to figure out my own workouts and things like that. Then I got back into it about two years ago. Back into it, knee deep in it? You enjoying it? Real real deep. Real deep uh, into competitive, it? Competitive. Yep. I remember hard when, every day. I remember when the little fella walked through the door of the gym for the very first time. <laughs> the, I don't, I don't the little know, fella. I don't, I don't know if I was too little. <laughs> it was like a little young buck back <laughs> then. He was like, what I, was. I got myself into, guys? Yeah, it was uh, It was intimidating, but it was so much fun. Cool, cool, cool. Well, glad to, uh, as you know, me and Nick were co-workers, CrossFit buddy, very good knowledge and in depth on CrossFit and we spend a lot of time talking about CrossFit every day, so we figured we could bring him on so he could drop some of that knowledge on us. Brother Thad, what's going on, man? Oh, you know it, man. Same How, old stuff. Same old stuff. How was that endurance class? Oh, it was pretty good Saturday. Um, I tried to bust everybody's abs up as good as I could, but um, it was just one of them deals. It's an experimental workout. Experimental workout? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we did some moves on there that um, – we don't hardly ever do. And uh, I don't know. That, what'd you think about it? It was a lot of running. So it, <laughs> it really got challenging when you had to do those over unders. Right. And it was like once you just accept that your butt was going to be touching <laughs> another man's butt, it was just all you just, just kind of work your way through and it was fine from there. Yeah. So when I, it, was a good, it was a good class, man. I enjoyed it, man. Enjoyed it. Endurance class. Where can they find this endurance class again, Thad? CrossFit Beaumont every Saturday morning at 8 30. And what's most important about that is what? It's free. Free 99. It's open to the public. Free. Anybody wants to come, uh, everybody, anybody wants to come try it out, they can come try it out any Saturday morning they want to. Chris Jordan asked us, but did I die? No, CJ, I didn't die. He came I, far from dying. I came far from dying. I see it was a good, it was a good workout. So, like I said, today the main focus is kind of give y'all guys a preview of the 2019 CrossFit Games, the culmination of the CrossFit season. So so we could crown what we would like to call in the CrossFit community the fittest man and woman and team on the face of the earth. Yeah. Would you agree with that? If you say somebody that does CrossFit, can we call them the fittest person on earth? What's y'all opinion on that? Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it overall, you've got Iron Man, you've got endurance things. But none of them actually bring all of that into one. I mean, cycling a barbell, Olympic lifting, you have to have endurance. They've got swimming now. They're bringing things in like biathlons where you're shooting. and you know, That was crazy. And, you know, that was actually Rogue shooting a gun. Was great. I was like, right. man, what? <laughs> what was Yeah, the Rogue Invitation was really good that they brought that shooting in there. Yeah, I mean, you take a you take an Ironman. You know, I've done little mini uh, tri sprint, sprint tries before. And, you know, you can go swim. You can go um, bike. And you can even run. But try to cycle a barbell in between some of them. Right. That. Yeah, that's I mean, what that's what separates everything. Yeah. Then you then you throw in the gymnastics. Right. Um it, yeah, I honestly believe that you are the they are the fittest people on the earth. <laughs> yeah, and you know, a lot of a lot of people will debate that. But I mean But if if you go back and look at the discipline, let's take uh Clea Teratumi, for example. Not only she's the fittest woman on earth, but she qualified for the Olympics, for her country. Right. So if you break down and you look at just, like, like like Nick say, let's look at some of the numbers and some of the different disciplines that they do. 5K runs, 
if you look at their 5K times, those are some legit 5K yeah, they all, times yeah, that they I mean, run. They they look at Matt, Matt Frazier and Pat Bellinger have an 1850. 1850, 5K. And if you think about just the amount of volume they lift in regards to the Olympic lifts, like these guys snatching 300, 350, 350 overhead, clean and jerking 390, mm-hmm. putting up 18 5Ks, back squatting 500 yeah. pounds. Most people that can, uh, that can run an 18-minute 5K can't. Can't even look at 300 pounds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but all jokes aside, even though, even when I think about myself as an athlete, I'm very hard on myself, but I'm like, man, I'm squatting, deadlifting about 565, and I can still run a sub six minute mile if I need 565. to. 565. You hear them numbers? 565. You know, I have to, have to, have to throw my, I'll throw my, yeah, throw my put on my own self. Sometimes, you, <laughs> sometimes you got to pat your own self on the back, Nick. That's why I don't <laughs> work out with him. I try Whatever, to stay, Nick. I try to stay away. <laughs> Nick has got me on some. When Nick gets me on a workout, he lets me know about it. Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. When he gets me, he lets me know. That's because you're the next one to pick off in the gym. <laughs> Nick. Nick came to work talking so much trash, and he so he lit a fire under my behind so I could get back motivated in the gym. But so we all agree that CrossFit is probably one of the better disciplines in regard to judging the fittest man in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, whenever you throw everything and all those – all those eggs in one basket, yeah. So, for the people who don't know, CrossFit Games, how many events they normally have over the course of the CrossFit Games is maybe like 10 to 13 events. I think it's around 13 or 14. Around 13 event, thirteen or 14 workouts over the span of four days. Four days. Four days. Four days. So, and this, I mean, we're not, like you said, we're not talking about, like, for example, Murph. Anybody, anybody who doesn't know what Murph is, that's a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 ab squats, and another mile run. So to do that and then turn around in two hours and then do a clean and jerk ladder all within the same day. This is the type of volume that we talk about when these guys go out and work out. Then they did what the uh, – what was that? I can't forget that fancy term they called that bike race when they was racing over the in the on, sand. On the, the, on the streets? Not on the one on the streets, but the oh, year before that. that. Cyclocross. Cyclocross. Yeah. Cyclocross. That was mind-blowing. Through the grass and dirt. Through the grass, the, the dirt, yeah. across the sand, carrying a bike. So CrossFit is, is, uh, is definitely one of the major – Sports, and I hope it gets a little bit more publicity behind it because now people like to call us a cult. Yeah, I mean, but this, if if it's any cult I want to be a part of, it's a cult of happy of a a fitness community that gets you motivated to lose weight instead of the fast food cult. I think you get you get the cult because what happens is you you bring people in and everybody works out together, right? They 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 grow together. They watch each other every day for an hour, hour and a half see each other get better each mm-hmm. and every day. Then they become friends. They spend that hour. It just brings a whole nother yeah. light to working out. And yeah, that's without a doubt. Yeah. So, look, on these, we already have, uh, we got one guy on here that keeps commenting. Uh, Josh, Josh Morales keeps commenting. He, now we're going to put this one in the bank and talk about it in just a little while. But Josh says, I think uh, OCR, obstacle course racing, Gives CrossFit a run for its money and overall fitness. So Josh Morales, so, we have a guy named Hunter. Yeah, that's what I said. We're what is his talk name? About that one. Hunter right. Newberry. Hunter McIntyre. Hunter, Hunter McIntyre. McIntyre. So Hunter McIntyre, world champ, is a world champion obstacle course runner, and he got a wild card invitation to compete in the CrossFit Games. Yep. I think he finished what three hundred with three three hundred worldwide or whatever. Pretty fit guy. Like he's the. He's legit fast. I didn't watch a couple of his workouts before, so your question will get answered, Josh, <laughs> to see if those guys can, uh, can hang with it. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I think he's got a good chance. I mean, top 20 in games. And he broke it down. I'm not going to go that far. Yeah. 30, top 30. I would say he'll finish in the bottom half. I, w- I would give him I – might, I might give him top – it all depends on how many more – uh, endurance, how much endurance they have. But so rumor has it, I think the endurance race is not till Sunday, the run swim one, because I was listening to some news articles, reading some news articles. It's the fact that that's when they actually uh, appealed to the city of Madison to kind of block off the roads and block off the streets for the actual bear. So we might not even get to see him in a uh, strategically. He might not even make it to Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just rumor about them blocking off the streets for the swim. So, hey, man, we, we got to <laughs> report, every, we gotta report we'll everything, big we'll dog. We'll see what's going to happen. So, so, we'll see, man. I, I, I hope the guy's – I ain't going to lie. The guy's kind of a jerk. He has, he's very conceited, but 
He, that, he, he can be. I mean, that comes with being great at anything that you a world do. World champion. I mean, a world why, champion. Why not? why not? So we'll see how he's been draining hard. He's been doing everything he's supposed to do, and he's going into it with an open mindset in regards to saying, hey, I know what I can't do. I have nothing to lose. So, hey, let's see what I can do about this. Yeah, I, mean, he, I mean, I'd like to see him do good. I really would I mean, because he, he's, uh, he's a good athlete. I mean, the he, guy goes and starts tra- training with the best, training with T and her crew. And, I mean, he, he's out to win. Did I say uh, obstacle course race guys are like 7, 170 max? I think Hunter is pretty big, though. Yeah, I mean, that that's an interesting fact. Uh, you know, you look at the CrossFit games, over 70% of the field is uh, 190 to 200 pounds, and they, they're running – average is 5 foot 8 to 5 foot uh, 10. Yeah. No, so they're like 2% yeah, of the 200 field is gonna over – 200 is going to be yeah. a heavy one. Too. And that's weird. So, don't think about myself. I'm like, what, I'm 5'10", 210 pounds? I'm considered a bigger yeah, I mean, athlete, a bigger CrossFit athlete. I think this year it's only 2% of the field in men are over 6 foot tall. Man. And Fakowski is probably one of the uh, – one of probably those two. One of probably one of probably those two. Fakowski and isn't Cole Sager over six feet tall? If I'm not mistaken. He's a pretty big. He's a pretty big guy. I don't know about that. I'm not sure. He's somebody. Happened? He's somebody you want to watch this year, though. Who? Definitely Cole. And he doesn't. We'll get. We'll get. We'll get to. Our, uh, let's let's keep let's keep giving the people an introduction before we get into our. Uh, so we get into our thing. So this kind of covers it. What makes CrossFit different? Different is the fact that. It covers a multitude of disciplines, meaning that you're not just focusing on one thing. Every time you go into going to the gym, you're gonna do something different. It's various is the movements are varied every week. Yeah, I mean you got agility, you've got mobility, you've got strength, endurance. I mean it covers everything in the fitness world into one hour class. Mm-hmm. One hour class. So how does one how does one say if a listener decides they just wanna so you know what I want to give this CrossFit a try. What do they need to do to qualify for the CrossFit Games? To qualify for the games? <laughs> <laughs> qualify for the games. I don't even know. Since the whole since the whole st- <laughs> it you will be, you know, in previous years it was set up to where the common guys actually had a chance with the regionals. Yeah. Com almost had a chance with regionals. I mean, being that what you had to finish in the top. You uh, had a chance to make it to regionals. That's what I said. Make it to regionals. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be common and get out uh, of regionals. I mean, no, no, yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 your regional is kind of like a sanctioned event. A I sanctioned mean, event. It's just, I think there were a better chance to get to a regional versus going and winning a sanctioned event. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so winning it so now. But now you you can. They're making it to where. You know, there's a lot of people going to these sanctioned events. Yeah, the sanctioned events are actually very, uh, very interesting to watch. One of the better ones I watched was the uh, Rogue Invitational, and that one was pretty. It was a pretty competitive, uh, pretty competitive uh, field they had. I think most of the guys already had uh, had invites to the games, and that opened the door for Chandler Smith to actually come in. Even though he finished fifth, I mean, he's not no slouch. Yeah. He finished fifth, and he was playing with some big boys up there and, and ended up uh, making it to the game. So I think the sanctionals puts more onus on the athlete because now you can't just focus on your training around a central part of the year. So now you have, what, how many sanctionals? Is it 15? Uh, I think it, it was like 12 or 13. 12, yeah. or, thir- 12 or 13 Const- sanctionals constantly. around the world. So Constantly growing. It seems like every time you turn around, there's another, it's a new one, sanctional. Another one, another one, so that one. So that – so how does that throw your training off, though? Being that you just out here, because I think it was uh, Danny Spiegel. I watched, I follow her on uh, Instagram. It seemed like every week she was going to a different regional. I mean, with the qualifiers. A different it, sanction. It looks like they're trying to stack the qualifiers quite a bit for all these sanction events. But the first year is kind of rough because you had the open. And then you had the qualifiers back to back to back. And then now you got the game. So it was a, a rush to get there to qualify for yeah. the games. Moving into the 2020 season, you'll see them spread out. More spread out a little bit more. Because yeah. I don't. If you notice, there's uh, several of these sanctioned events that are g- the only way you can qualify for them is through your rankings in the open. Really? Yeah. So no more. So only with your rank. So that's right. So it's two opens this year. The next open, the next season starts in what October? I think they have another CrossFit open going and starting a new season in October, and that kind of. And it opens them there, then it goes from the sanctions from that point on. That should uh, start off the 2020 season. 2020 season. 
So, I mean, this is to me is just is different, but it's entertaining to the casual CrossFit person because now you could enjoy, you can see these people compete year round. Whereas before you had to wait to like a small couple of months, you see them at regionals, then that was it. And you see them in the CrossFit games and that was it. Now you can see these guys almost every week, if you think about it, 13 weeks of just watching these sanctional events. Yep. A lot of working out. A lot of working out. A lot of work through the year. But to get back to what you were talking about, you know, what is CrossFit? If you take out this, the CrossFit games, which that's what, you know, everybody sees CrossFit as. It's the CrossFit games, looking for the fittest on earth. But take out all the competing, right? What is CrossFit and what can it do for you? How do you get into it, right? So finding word of mouth, right? You're always Mm -hmm. hearing from somebody that's going to CrossFit. Go try it out. Somebody knows somebody that does CrossFit. And I think go, it's grown to that point. Right. Go try it out. Give it a give You it know a what shot. I hate when people say? One people week, always, people always say, uh, I got to get in shape so I can get into CrossFit. Yeah. We've talked about this. And I think that's kind of why Glassman, like you, was, like you said, kind of getting back to the essence of the community is the fact that they see these athletes compete, which means you're really only looking at the top 0.1% of the CrossFit athlete around the world. It may be about how many people normally sign up for the Open? About 500,000 people, four to 500,000 yeah. people sign up for the Open, and only, what, 40 would make the CrossFit game? So you do the math. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's small. It's small. So everybody that walks into the gym for the first time, the first thing they look around is like, hey, these people are just like yeah, me. You know, that's what I would say. You know, I, I have a home gym that I go to, and I've, I've ventured out. I go to, go to a few other gyms also. When I travel for work sometimes, I try to hit a gym everywhere I can. But every gym is different. If you don't like a gym that you walk in the doors after a week or two or a month, hey, go check out another one. Some some have different uh, personalities. Some have some are real competitive. Some aren't. Go go try them all out and see see how they are. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, find you have to find a gym and find a coaching style that kind of fits you. Right. Kind of fits you. What you said about Thad's coaching style before we show started? <laughs> that's, a, that's a grumpy guy right a there. Grumpy Gus that's right grumpy. there. All, all I can tell you is you better pay attention when he's talking about what talk about the, work, the workout. Because workout. Hey. if you don't listen to him, he's going to call you out right in the middle of everybody. Right. In a good way. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. He does, he it, in does it in a good way. In a in a, a Thad loving type of way. You have to pay attention to the coach describing the workout. That is true. If you don't. Then you're going to be walking around in the middle of the workout going, what am I supposed to be doing? So that's real big in CrossFit is trusting your coach. Right. Because the misnomer and the myth that everybody gets is that CrossFit hurts everybody. Yeah, no, I mean, CrossFit can be technical, right? There's some Olympic lifts and things like that, but that's what's good about it. You know, you, you we'll talk about money, right? People, first thing they say, oh, CrossFit's hard. I need to be in shape to do CrossFit. Then they'll say it's too expensive. Well, go get you a personal trainer. And pay him five days a week for <laughs> so a whole month so and can, come back and tell me how expensive it is. So I can look at you work on the hammer strength machines yeah, and the I leg mean, extension machines for two yeah, hours a day. I mean, that coach is watching over you. That's that's his job, to make sure everybody in the class is, is doing the right thing and, and making the right movement so they don't hurt themselves. So, so if you do hurt yourself at CrossFit, it's because you weren't doing what you were supposed to. More than likely. More than likely. Yeah, but that that's good, man. That's a good coach. He's correcting me. He got on me uh, Saturdays. I wasn't paying attention, and I was the de- and I was the demo person for the beginning of the class. That's Ernest, even, that's get your better. get your foot forward. So, all right, that I just listen. He always hollers at me too. So don't be afraid, guys. Don't be afraid to start CrossFit, man. Because you never know. You might. It's people. I, it's rare occasions, but. Is certain people that grab on a CrossFit and love it, and those people excel at it because they have that. It taps into that that athlete inside of people. It taps into that natural competitive nature that we have to want to be better. I believe that nobody generally has the instincts to want to sit on the couch all day. Evolution wise, historical wise, if you look at our ancestors, we weren't built to sit down and do nothing all day. We built to move. We built to be competitive. That's just what we do. And CrossFit kind of taps into that. Yeah. Like we all in here, we all buddies in here. And we go to the gym and work out and I'd be like, no way I'm letting Nick beat me in his workout today. <laughs> <laughs> it's no it's like blood in the water. Yeah, definitely, definitely gonna try to push you. That's for sure. <laughs> and that's the goal. And I know Nick is there to, to push me every day. And I want to see you laying on the floor dying because you tried to <laughs> That's why Thad, since other Thad, you're gonna have to stop sending us the workouts ahead of time. I'll be like, yeah, I think I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bird dog. This workout and not uh, cherry pick this one and not go. But or compl- uh, complain. I ain't gonna let you do that. Or 
Ernest complaining about us oh, too much running. I tried that, so I tried to get the running down to two hundred, but then you I that, got. You saw that work. You saw where that got you, huh? Yeah, it got me nowhere. <laughs> so four hundred wasn't bad. It was a, it was a, it was a good it was a good run. Four hundred was a good run with the medicine ball. So I need to get. I have been slacking on my run in the past couple of days, so I need to get some good running in. So, so that's CrossFit, guys. Uh, go find a local gym. Try it out, give it a chance, and uh, just give CrossFit the opportunity to uh, to make you a better person. So let's talk about nutrition, training, and recovery. As an athlete, what's uh, how do you rate these things of importance? I know they all kind of play a – what's most important to you? I mean, overall, when you're working out, you know, if, you, if you're looking for a certain body type or wanting to do a certain thing, lose a few pounds, nutrition is number one. Yeah, that's without, the without, without your nutrition, I mean, you can work out as much as you want, and you're not going to get results. Mm-hmm. It is key. Nutrition, folks. Nutrition. Nutrition is the base of the pyramid. No doubt. No doubt. It is. I mean, I didn't dial in my tr- nutrition. I mean, I guess last around last September, I was probably in the best shape I was in, um, and that was because of nutrition. And I'll tell you one thing about nutrition. Um, and I've really been looking into it a lot here recently, is protein. Protein is the key. It's hard to get enough protein in if you're just eating your meals or not stacking enough protein into it, not paying attention to it. I think, what is it? Uh, what's, the, well, what's the common ratio of how much protein you should consume? You should consume uh, one ounce or one gram, one gram one gram of protein for every pound of body weight. <sighs> But that's cute. People wonder why they're not putting on muscles because it sounds like it's like a lot, you know. And to f- bigger people, yeah, sure it is. But you can get it if you eat the right things, you know. And but then you got to be careful when some of these things, like uh, what I found here recently, uh, messing around with this uh, RP diet app that I started uh, using, um, like ground turkey, like a ninety three. The 93.7, the leanest ground turkey you can get. If you're trying to get to a certain amount of, uh, say, 35 grams of protein in a meal using ground turkey, you're not going to get there because the fat content's too high. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So yeah, because I mean, not gonna that, that, that's the other piece to it, right? Your, right. your carbs, your you fats. Gotta, to balance it out. And sugars. You know, I mean, it was, I was watching my macros and I was couldn't find any results. Well, even though I was eating fruits, my sugar intake was still too high. Hmm. And so I wasn't getting the results. You know, you try to go eat two or three apples a day and a couple of grapes, a couple of strawberries, you're you're over your sugar. And that's what uh and that's what used to get me in trouble was the sugar from fruit juices. Well, like apple juice. That type of sugar is different from the what he's talking about. I don't think that the sh- the sugars that you that you consume through, say, some fresh strawberries or fresh blueberries is going to be that detrimental to you as much as going to the store and buying a, a 16-ounce thing of orange juice. Of orange juice. Right. Yeah, that's what – and that used to get me. I used that's to be like – I used sugar. To, I used to – yeah. And people don't realize how much extra carbs and refined sugars they consume just from drinking, drinking unhealthy beverages. Yeah, so. Coke. Coca Colas, Coca Colas. Cokes are bad. Why do people drink Cokes? I, I like. I mean, I still. I'll tell you what. I, I, Dad's the one who got me addicted to them. But sparkling water. I think it's the. I think it's just the the fizz or the carbonation. Yeah. I had my mom try sparkling water this weekend. She was it like, "This is just nasty." Uh-huh. <laughs> so then I tried to trick her, and I told her it was a sprite. She said, "Even though it's cold, it's still nasty." <laughs> <laughs> but what? But you're right though. What it does? Because drinking, honestly, drinking water gets dull. Right. I mean, that's unless you just that discipline, that's routine. So what the carbonated water does, even with a little flavor, it kind of gives you a, a a different taste. It gives your body a different taste because it's kind of refreshing and gives you a new curve. So And it curves that uh, appetite for having that sugary apple juice. So a lot of times if you go to that healthier option, it kind of mentally curves that and helps and allows you to go to a better option. So. So that's nutrition. So recovery. Let's talk about recovery. What's important with recovery? How do these CrossFit athletes recover to be able to work out the way they do? How do you recover? Number one, a majority of them get a minimum of eight hours of sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. sleep. If you start reading and watching 
what these people do, a lot of them are getting up 10 hours a night. Yeah, I mean, I, I get made fun of quite a bit because I have a, a daily routine. <laughs> and that dad's laughing because he, he knows he'll text me or something, and I'll get mad at him the next morning <laughs> sending a text after 9 o'clock. I mean, because you, I mean, you feel a difference. If I get five hours of sleep, I'm done. I'm horrible the whole day. After lunchtime, right. I'm dead. I don't have the energy. But six to seven hours, that's, that's like prime time for me. And I only not only just six to seven hours because I'm real. I'm a big proponent of sleep as well. I track my sleep, how much deep sleep I'm getting, what's my heart rate when I'm sleeping, making yeah. sure my sleep is quality. So I remember the biggest investment or the best investment I got was when we spent about three or something thousand dollars on a bed or just a mattress. People said, "Why would you spend that much money on a mattress?" You just say right. because you don't realize how much time you spend laying down sleeping and how much that affects you. The next day, if you don't have a quality night's rest. Yeah. Yep. Just think if you turn that six hours of sleep into eight. So you're telling me I'll make the CrossFit Games? Yes. <laughs> yes. So you hear that, folks? Dad told me if I sleep eight hours a day, it's, I mean, but, and this is, and I want to say it's hard, you know, with kids and everything like that, but I even push the time I'm getting to work back to make sure I get, because, yeah, I get sleep five hours, get to work at six o'clock in the morning, but then I'm not productive after lunch because I'm tired. But if I push that time back to make sure I get my six to seven hours of sleep, it's a lot better the next day. Uh, it, so. might, it might be those three or four workouts you have in before lunch. Hey man, don't worry about my workouts, man. So, I, Well, I mean, but that's key to recovery. People say, well, how are you able to work out so much and do all these things? Because I'm eating the right type of foods. Right. Uh, it's not. I just don't wake up and decide to do this. I fast. I eat the right amount of foods. I monitor my sleep. I'm very religious about what I eat. I try to eat healthy. I get upset at myself if I eat a cookie. That's extreme. <laughs> the best what? part. The best part is since we work together, every now and then I'll bust him with a big old cookie in his hand. Uh-huh. But I still. But I, I do eat a cookie though. He'll make up for it. He'll uh, put in an extra workout that day. <laughs> so, so well, yeah. So what else do we got for recovery? Sleep. You know, because it realistically, let's be realistic too. Everybody can't get ten hours of sleep a night. So sleep, and then you, we're going to get back to nutrition. The nutrition. Nutrition. Thing. Yes. So. <clears throat> When you want to talk about nutrition and recovery, you need to talk about the timing of your food. So what do you mean by timing of the food, That Well, you like immediately after you work out. I would say if you can, within about 45 minutes of, of working out, you need to get you a good meal in you. You say good 45 hour. minutes? Yeah, 45 minutes to an hour if you can. I try to do, yeah, I try to keep mine, so I'll eat at 12, 11, then I'll eat again at 3, and that'll put me right in that zone, right in that good zone to get me able to work out at my four, at my 4.30, 4.30 class, so. So, time of your food, nutrition, sleep, what about uh these recovery drinks, people drinking? Do you believe in those, the BCAAs, the whey proteins? Whey protein, we know whey protein works. So I like to take whey protein out of the the realm. I put that made like a meal replacement type realm because protein is protein. There's no gimmicks. There's no gimmicks behind it. Whey protein, you got your casein protein, which is your long, which is your slow digestive protein that you can think at night. I think that you said you actually drink it in the daytime, don't yeah. you? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll drink a, um, a shake with whey protein in it at about 9, 9.30, 9.45 in the morning. Let's get you going. It's just, it um uh, it fills a hole. <laughs> I mean, it fills. It fills. That, that, that gap when that stomach's <laughs> telling you go ahead and get something in. And that's another thing people got to understand is learn to control your hunger, because a lot of times you don't. I think I was reading a story or watching a YouTube video about the science behind hunger. Is the fact that a lot of times we're not necessarily hungry. It's just our bodies is programmed to eat food. At a particular time every day, and we just used to doing that. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, you go drink, and that's what leads us to overeat a lot of times. Drink a glass of water. Drink a glass of water, I let it settle out, I, walk. I keep a jar of peanut butter, just one spoon oh. of peanut butter right there. It'll curb it. One, who eats one spoon of peanut butter? Well, you got to be disciplined to do that, or else the, the whole jar will be gone. <laughs> no, you you gotta, the, whole jar, the whole jar will be gone. <laughs> you got to add that to your, uh, to your, to your um, carbs and your fat. Right. So that's so that's some, so that's some advice for us uh, for us normal folks. It's not competing at the CrossFit Games. Make sure recovery. Make sure you get your sleep. Sleep is key. 
is no amount of caffeine that could get your body moving and get your body the nutrients that you need. It might give you that initial boost, but the answer is uh, sleep. Sleep is number one covering it all. All roads always lead back to nutrition. Yep. Nutrition is key for recovery. Nutrition, nutrition is key for even sleeping the right way and getting the right macros, the right nutrients that your body needs. You have to eat the right types of foods. I think it was Ben Bergeron said that only shop in the perimeter of the stores. Yeah, that's that's true to to a certain extent. To a certain extent. Right. Um, say oatmeal. Oh, yeah, oatmeal. Okay, you know, yeah. Some of your oats and things like oats, that. Oats, roll oats, your complex carbohydrates, you can find that, but... So what ultimately what he's saying you is have toilet paper. And soap. <laughs> <laughs> but what but what what he means is uh, stay away from the refined foods, the refined sugars, the pro- super processed foods that you have out there that you could avoid, avoid them. And sometimes it's impossible to completely avoid them. So limit like limit the consumption to the optimal serving size on there because you might get a bowl of cereal and you might fill your bowl up eat two or three bowls of cereal, now you didn't consume over 100 grams of sugar. Yeah, it goes back to that nutrition serving size. I mean, Serving who, size. Who wants to, everybody wants to go eat a big old chicken fried steak, right? <sighs> with it, gravy? With gravy. Mashed potatoes? You could probably cut that in almost three servings. <laughs> one plate. So, that's good. Nutrition. So, taking a turn a little bit, let's talk about these elite athletes. What type of, what type of recovery and nutrition? These guys do some extreme things when it comes to them getting up to the CrossFit Games, to be able to work out 13 times within a span of four days, they have some serious stuff going on with them. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of them carry. What are those little leg things people put on their legs now? The compression sleeves. Compression sleeves. Uh, power dots. They have chiropractors on the deck. Those power dots. The power dots. dots. Muscle stimulators. Hmm, muscle stimulators. So it's nutrition. They got their planned meals cooked for them every day. Whole Foods. Whole Foods probably get a lot of business when CrossFit people roll yeah, in town. Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, they do. Maybe get us a food truck and just go up there and sell go, all. Go sit on the side of the stadium. <laughs> go sit on the side of the stadium and sell some uh, sell yeah. some stuff. So. I saw a video the other day. Um, I can't remember. It might have been uh, a little documentary on uh, Ben Bergeron's athletes when they did their uh, their games camp here recently. Uh-huh. And uh, they all went to Whole Foods and ate, like ate lunch. Amanda Bar- Barnhart carried her scale in there with her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're getting the food off the buffet thing. Or yeah. Whatever call it in there. And she's weighing all her food up. Yeah, so guys, these elite athletes have it down to a science. Yeah, I mean, when you want to be the best, too. I mean, yeah. I mean, look at poor Amanda last year. She struggled on that pegboard. And, you know, as embarrassing it probably was, it was a great – Right, but learning I guarantee process. you she won't do that again. No, it's a great thing. What was that? Learning. Amanda Barnhart. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All this is a learning. Did y'all see, I hate to digress a little bit. Did y'all see, uh, who was that? Was it Laura Hovart or whatever? How bad she did. She could not do a strict uh, a strict handstand push-up at the Rogue Invitational. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't yeah, see she, that. man, it was it was mind-blowing. I, I don't know if, it's, if she was coming off an injury or whatever she was coming off, but she could not do – a strict deficit handstand push up. She's somebody that would, I would think we'd need to be watching. Yeah, she came in second, second last year. Last year, she pulled it out of the Dubai. Yeah, she won't. Then, she uh, won't come in second this year. You know, yeah, you think she's kind of? I uh, think she had a bad. She had a, a was it injuries or just a bad year or just uh, every everything I've seen her compete in so far, she really didn't do that. She has been. She had been too impressive with me. I thought, and she was picked to be the one to challenge Tara Toomey coming up in this year, but she just like fell off the uh, fell off the map. Yeah, I don't see it happening. So, moving on. So, that's recovery nutrition. Let's talk a little bit more about these games. Up there, and where the games held at? Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. Used to be in California. They switched the location. Too many people was passing out for Murph. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was too hot. It was, it was too hot. It was it was too hot. hot. Tell them to come on down to Texas. Yeah, so, so, all these, so all these people, I mean, they were like legit. It was, there was legit carrying people out on stretches yeah. after, that, after that Murph. I've always said for years they need to, they need to set the uh, CrossFit games up out in Winnie at the old Nutty Jerry's old place out <laughs> Man. there. Man. Set I it mean, up even, out there. You know, Austin, Texas, Austin's it's, it's hot out there. People can't. People couldn't. It's a little bit dry. They don't have mosquitoes and humidity. That's but, true. Like, at, Nutty Jerry. So they need some of that stuff that <laughs> punch you in the face when you walk outside, like you walk into a cloud of heat. Yeah. 
takes your breath away. Take so. you. There's no reason you should smell the concrete at 5 a.m. in the morning when you go outside. It's so dang hot. Asphalt melting when you walk across it. So speaking of the girls, you think anybody's going to challenge Tara Toomey this year? Or she just uh, did her going off and train with Rich Frone and just put her. She smoked the competition at the Rogue Invitationals. It wasn't even, it wasn't close. Yeah, it wasn't close. And I don't see anybody beating her. Um, just from my observations, from everything that I've seen this year in this off season, and um, all the reading and videos and stuff I've watched, my my pick to give her the best run for her money is going to be Amanda Barnhart. Really? Amanda Barnhart, she's American, right? Yes, she was a collegiate swimmer, hmm. and uh, she has worked her butt off. What about old Sam Briggs, Samantha Briggs. Sam just can't get over it. She she's good. Yeah, but she's she's dominated every sanctional she, she yeah. competed in. But she's good at what she's good at. And yeah. And when she's I don't think what is what does she always struggle with in the past? Has it been the weightlifting part of it? Or I don't know. She won one. That was kind of the I don't want to say the uh the years after Annie. Annie had injured. She won that one year. Then Camille won for a couple of years. And then that's when the uh, – Yeah, she went back in 13. Yeah, that's when Catherine Davis' daughter took over after that before Toomey. She's actually yeah. – I don't want to say – I don't want to say anybody has fallen off, but she hasn't progressed. And I don't know if that's attributed to – I'm speaking about Catherine Davis' daughter. I don't think it's attributed to her. I think the athletes are catching up to her in regards to their training because she's still a top-level athlete. So when we when – we, so let's let me not. I don't want people to get me confused when I say digress. These people digress to a level of still superhuman. So I mean, they still at a mark that even the women at a point where we all CrossFit athletes aspire to achieve. So we're comparing the best of the best to the best of the best. But she hadn't been. Yeah, it make, makes you wonder when they win, did they peak? And yeah, when they, when they fall back off that that winning spot because it's hard. She won. She won. Back, she won back to back, didn't she? No, uh, Sam only won uh, 2013. No, I'm talking about Catherine. Catherine won two years. Catherine won two years in a row, and it's tough yeah. to get back. 15 and 16. Unless you're Rich Frohn and I'm Matt Frazier. True. True. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if anybody can uh, yeah, unless something, beat Matt. Unless, so unless, if, uh, unless Matt Frazier and Tia Claire <laughs> break a leg or something, there's nobody going to touch either one of them. I will say, though, even though Tara Toomey might be the favorite to win, it's still more competitive watching the women. It's kind of deflating when you watch Matthew Frazier smoke everybody in endurance on the first day, and then he's like, okay, well, we just – and it, it gets in the psyche, especially for Patrick Vell, and you're waiting on him to be like, okay, when is he going to take it to that next you like when, next level? You know, when you look at the average number of individual games appearances between the men and the women, the women are almost one more higher, almost at three average games appearance compared hmm. to men at one and a half, two. When you say average, you mean like per athlete competing? Yeah. Yeah, really? how many times they've been to the games. Hmm. But it's, it's parity at the bottom for the men, but at the top is it's, it's solid. It's, it's solid. Matthew Frazier. Yeah. I mean, Ben Smith snuck in a year when uh, – Ben Smith snuck in a one year between the, between the post Fronin year yeah. and – 2000, 2015. Ben Smith said, I'm going to get me one of these. And I th- you know, we'll probably get into it more in a minute, but I'm so glad he got that wild card. Yeah, I, was just, I just saw that this morning and he got that wild card. His 10th tenth, tenth year. Yeah. 11th year. 10th or 11th year to appear in the games. And people don't realize he's it. He's coming off of an injury, though. Yeah. yeah, he had that bad. But you saw he posted uh, those hang cleans at like 300. Hang cleaning jerks at 300 pounds for reps. That's crazy. <laughs> for reps. And it's crazy. So if you think about it, he, this is the 11th CrossFit game appearance, and him and Matt Frazier are the same age. Yeah, the average age for uh, men's uh, 27, 29 years old, which, so. is, uh, which is pretty uh, remarkable. Everybody, you, you would think the early age, 23, 24, would be a peak peak time. But Now, if your boy Ricky Giroir wouldn't have got busted, <laughs> he, was spo- <laughs> he was supposed to be the uh, – he was supposed to be the one that was going to take – well, he got third place in his first one, but when you – on – the uh, CrossFit documentary, Taking Pills from Your Brother, it's not yeah, a good look. Not a good idea. It's not. Have y'all seen that documentary? I haven't seen His it. brother literally came up to him and gave him something to take, and he went and took it. How dumb is that? Really? Yeah. And his brother failed a test this year. Yeah, his brother failed a test, too. So I'm like, come on, guys. Y'all real grimy over there. So <laughs> that, but, that, that could be a whole other uh that's what I'm saying. Nick got Nick got we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna dabble in that. Nick. Nick has his own that theory. Bother me to see people Nick has his own hey, own theory on the sacral we call it the sacrificial lamb theory that Nick has on it when it comes to uh 
CrossFit and the and the performance enhancers, as some would say. But yeah. digressing a little bit, let's talk about so women. Women can women feel is very competitive. Even though Tara might win, you still have the Catherine. She still have the uh, Sarah. Sarah. She still have the uh, Camille. Yeah, Sarah's in good Camille. shape too. Yeah, Sarah, she's man, she's a beast too. She's been quietly kind of training. She hadn't really been getting as much press. She did. As uh, as she usually she does. did really good at the Rogue Invitational. She showed yeah. she showed what she could do at the Rogue Invitational this but year. What, what's changed her, in my opinion, is uh, she went back to Iceland and started training over there. She had bounced around for a couple of years uh, with her coaching, right? Yeah, and she trained uh, what year before last? She trained. Rich Froning in them the whole time. Yeah, because it was it was weird because she left uh, she left Iceland and she was supposed to be going to California, right? And then she stopped at Mayhem and ended up and ended up staying at Mayhem, and that's what she did the open and did the regionals, and she did the open in that in that region, so she stayed in that region for that year. And then she left from there that year and had a coach the next year, so now she's back at Iceland. Now, what do they put in the water up there with those women? I don't know. <laughs> There's some athletes that come from It's the some way. it's some pure athletes. Maybe because they don't have no pollution like we got down here. That country is powered on what? Uh oh, hydroelectric energy. They powered up there by those uh no idea. Like the the water, the geysers, the geysers or whatever. That's what that's what powers that country, and gives them the energy. No pollution like we have down here. So they got a lot of good fish to eat up there. Too. Good fish, good food. The mountain is from Iceland. That's a big dude. Yeah. Yeah. So transitioning over to the male side. So we know Matthew Freitz is going to win. He's going to win by – he's going to get to the point where he's going to be like every year in a third – uh was that? Third to last event. He's going to already secure first place because they have enough points. So it's people pretty much competing for second place. I mean, I guess it just depends. I mean, you know, with the new format this year and – Everything going on. What kind of workout they do the first first go around? Sure, that's right because now they uh they cut the field. They cut the field. Be cut in half. Field's gonna be cut in half, half a line, huh? Yeah. So after back the first workout. So backtracking a little bit, just so guys know, the top twenty in the world qualify for the games, right? In the open qualify through the open. Yeah. Through the open, then you have the uh, then every country that has a CrossFit affiliate, if you're a citizen of that country and you become number one, you earn a trip to the CrossFit Games. Right. And then the winner of the sanctional event also get an automatic invite to the CrossFit Games. Correct. So as compared to what a norm would have about, what, 40? Is it 40 athletes? 40 to 45 athletes competing? So what's the numbers going to be this 40, year? 148 um, men and 134 women. Whew. Yeah. Really? And 14 teams. And these teams this year, if you looked at them, man, they're, they're like super, sacked. super teams. Yeah, because now teams don't even have to uh, have to train or work together. Well, if, if, you didn't, if you didn't get a spot through a sanctional, you were definitely going to try to put a team together. Super team. So, so that's how you make the CrossFit game. So there's a lot of people. So back to the men. So, Nick, you're saying it's the fact that by the makeup of the games this year and cutting off the competition, it kind of closes that window on Matt Frazier. I think it – I don't – not, unless they unless necessarily unless they unless they do some type of point reset in regards to what a points a weighted system based on how they go, I don't man, this that guy's guy's just that good. No. I just think it depends on the workout. No. <laughs> That's a no. So who's gonna win second place? Who's gonna I, win second place? Think, Is it Patrick Vellner? I think Vellner's gonna be there. When is Vellner gonna get his stuff together and really challenge? It it always seems like he just doesn't have that edge. You know what I'm saying? Like you know how Matt Frazier, you look in his eyes and when he has a bad every time he has a bad uh event, the next event he's damn near gonna win that event. You look at him, he has that killer instinct in him where Vellner's like, Oh, oh well. I mean you haven't heard much about Hogberg, Hogberg, Lucas Lucas Holmberg third last year. I haven't seen much about him in the media or social media, things like that. So I I'm not sure how he's gonna do, but I think you got Frazier first, Vellner second, and then you know, you gotta Handful of folks that could pull in a third or fourth. I mean, no, you still get uh, no, you still getting good money third and fourth, but this would be what number three, number three for Frazier if he wins it. Before, hmm. I think before it'd be four. Before? Yeah, it'd be four? Damn. Damn. Sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. How many did Rich Fronin get? Yeah, three, three, three. Yeah. So can we can we say that he's better than Rich Fronin? Not yet. <sighs> if Rich Fronin was still. It, if, if, 
Does Rich Frona need to come out and retire, train for a year as an individual athlete, think he could beat Matt Frazier? No. Um, that's that's not a fair assessment no, because of the age. age. How old is Frona now? Uh, shoot, man, I can't remember. Mid-30s, 35? Early 30s. I think he just had a birthday. I can't I'm remember. Not, not but, you know, sure. if you really if – you, if you go back and look at the Open, I've, I think, if I remember correctly, was, Rich Froning finished like 10th overall. Yeah, he was in, top top 20 in, for sure. In the Open. No, he's still I – mean, Rich Froning is still no slouch when it comes to uh, – Yeah, he got – I think he got first in that one workout. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, he's no slouch, but can he can he one-on-one beat Matt Frazier? I think he's top five at the games if he was to come back individual. i say top three. He can, make the, he can make the podium right now. If he – the reason he stepped away, I feel like, and he stated before, was the fact that timing, just the okay. time, can soon, you know, the what it takes to compete at that level. Like Matthew Frazier said in his interview that he, only thing he has to worry about when he wakes up in the morning is training. You know, that's that's something when you talk about the training and the level at these uh, of training that they put in the time for what three hundred thousand dollars for first place in the games. That's yeah, no that, money. That's what I'm looking up right now. Yeah. I mean, you look at you look at professional football, which is a little bit different. Baseball, motocross, yeah. you know, across the board, they're 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 way underpaid for what, what for what they work they put in. Talking about CrossFit athletes, yeah. oh yeah. I mean, and if you look at all the athletes, you know, like Velner, he just graduated school, chiropractor. Yeah, uh, and see, you know, the Frazier's an engineer. Is uh, Frazier is he Fikow- engineer? Fikowski's got a PhD, if I'm not mistaken. Fikowski, that guy's something else. Yeah, I don't like well, him. Fikowski's <laughs> well, I don't like Fikowski. Is he an accountant? He's he's yeah. something. I thought he was an accountant or something like that. But the thing is, is the fact that only the top top of the athletes make the top money in this game. Yep. Now, yeah, endorsements. Right? Endorsements. Yeah, granted, some of the some of the athletes make uh, get Nike shoe deals, get supplement deals, get some money off their Instagram. But most of them have affiliates. And that's how most of them make a living for us before they sell. Yeah. Yep. Um. Here's the the figures for the 2019. I I, I heard this the other day. In 2019, first place will win uh, three hundred thousand dollars. That's pretty good. Second place gets one hundred and fifteen thousand, and third gets seventy five thousand. I mean, that's still good money. I mean, yeah, it's good money. It's good money, but they train hard, right? Oh, and yeah. They don't just train once a day for an hour. They, oh no, they no, train no, three no. To four hours the teams, a day. Teams, the first place team gets a hundred thousand dollars. Ooh, it's kind of yeah, and it's kind of short Second change. place gets seventy, and third place gets forty. Split that between four people. Now, here's, here's where things start getting depressing for somebody like me. <laughs> the masters division, the uh, the the, the thirty five to thirty nine, the, mm-hmm. the youngest masters, the people that I really don't think are masters. I am a masters athlete. Twenty five thousand dollars for first place. I mean, but, but see, most of us have real jobs, though, too. Right. I mean, we got we got families. We 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 out of this realm where cool. we think CrossFit is just paying the bills. We you gotta, you gotta want it, right? We gotta want you it. Gotta yeah. Want it. The the divisions that go from forty, you know, they're in, they're five year increments, but from forty to sixty, the winner of each one of those divisions gets uh, ten thousand dollars. <sighs> That won't even pay for a year's gym gym membership. That won't even cover. <laughs> you got to think about what these guys are paying to go to these sanctioned events now. I mean, what's the entry fee for oh, the games? I saw something interesting about that. I think the you know how much it, you know how much it costs for the national champion from China to come over and compete in the games. Quite a bit. Yes. I mean, standard airfare just from China here is probably two, three thousand dollars. Two, three thousand dollars. Now, hotel, in hotel for a week. You need to get here a few days early so you can acclimate to the weather. And ten thousand yeah. dollars. And this guy won't even sniff the podium. Right. <laughs> might get, hey, with the new format, might be going home. The, no, the first this day. guy won't sniff. The, might, listen to what I'm saying, Nick. He might be. He might get cut the first. This day. guy's He's paying ten thousand dollars to come compete. Maybe one time. One, one time. time. But he's in that. But the thing you can't take away from him, he's a national champion. True. And he got some endorsements. So digressing a little bit, let's go to let's talk about the team. So that's the man. We all kind of agree that Matthew Frazier is going to win in hands down. Yeah. Not close. Any wild cards you want to throw in there? I really want to see how Chandler Smith holds up in a CrossFit game situation. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because he's a strong guy and he's fast. But I don't know if he can hold up. 
OW. I want to see how you hold up for that many events because that's when the experience plays into it. Knowing when to back off, knowing when to push it, knowing what events you have to go into, and knowing I have to do my best at this. So it's all game like. I'm pretty sure Matthew Frazier doesn't go into it saying I'm about to win the endurance. I just want to get top ten, top five. If he gets top ten, top five in endurance, then that's it. That's like the marathon row last year, rowing what. 42,195 42, meters. 95 meters. That's the goal, a lot of rowing. The goal for that was to finish, not to win, because the person who won struggled the rest of the week. They yeah. didn't do good. So, wild card, I'd like to see Chandler Smith. I want to see if Patrick Vellner could actually push it to that next level, see if he could get that fire under his eyes. Who else y'all got? Fakowski? I mean, I think Cole Sager. I mean, you know, his motto is to, to be kind and work hard. You know, yeah. be, stay humble. He's not as I mean, look, he did he did real good real good at the Rogue Invitational. He I did. Mean, he did. He pushed everyone. He, I think he even won one of the workouts. Did really good. I want to see Ben Smith. See what Ben what kind of noise Ben Smith can make. Is he happy to be there or is he there to really compete and try to win? Or more is like and just think about it, that's how good of an athlete he is. Coming off a of knee surgery, he finished eleventh in the Rogue Invitation. I guarantee you he'll still get a top ten finish in the uh CrossFit games. Oh yeah. Easy. I think so too. So now to these super teams. We ain't going to spend too much time on it. So now the format has changed to where you don't have to. Before, it was, what, six six people, three men, three women, and you have to train for a year at the gym that you – at the home gym that you go to. Correct. But now it's down to two men, two women. So now you can no longer hide that big, strong guy or the guy that was good at gymnastics. Everybody has to be good at everything. You can pick whoever the hell you want for the teams. Yeah, I mean, nope. that's – there's some good teams out there this year. There's there's no no doubt about that. I think I saw uh who's that on Travis uh Williams team that was actually pretty good. They have a really good team. Is it is, Alexis Johnson? Is China Cho on Rich Ronis team yes. this year? Yeah, she's on his one. <sighs> That's a guarantee. Well they actually actually their team hadn't been looking too good this team year. With, the team with uh was it Camille, Jessica Griffith, um Alex Smith. Alex Smith, yeah, that's a that's, that's a pretty solid. They team. Actually, didn't they beat Frone and them head up in a competition this year at one of the invitationals? I think the uh, I think so. Which one was that? Waterpalooza? I'm not sure. They won the Waterpalooza, but um, everybody was complaining because they were also um, the demo team. They, oh. they got to demo all the workouts. How the hell the demo team gets to compete at the? Uh, hey, I don't know about y'all, but. Demo and a workout's no fun because you got to do it. <laughs> I mean, well, that's, that's well, like Fran, it's, right? I they mean, had, they had made a run through of, of they, all the workouts yeah. before anybody else even knew what they it were. It is an advantage. It is, you, you, can, you know, where you can. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's always if you do a workout. I know you're not going to improve a whole bunch that goes by how many times I've done open workouts over and over again, but you can improve some when it comes to uh, being able to have an advantage of doing the workouts again. You can't come back and. Do a lot better if you get a chance to do it the second time around. Definitely, especially if uh, you know they're in synchro and trying to get that all working at the same time. Working at the same time. That's a tough one. So that's the CrossFit Games, man. They got the team competition. You got the individual male, female. Also, you have the uh, master division. Goes all the way up to what? What's the top? Shoot, it goes over sixty. 60 over sixty years old. Sixty years old. So they got guys out there competing. Sixty-five. Sixty-five competing in the CrossFit Games. The team division. It starts at what, 13, 14 years old? I think so. Yeah, 13 or 14 years old. 14. For the teens, goes up to 17, 18 years old. You got to compete with the big boys. Shoot, so uh, About two years ago, was it two years ago? Last year, they had a team. A team was uh, squat. Was squat snatching? Squat snatching. That's that kid from Brazil. That dude is 300 pounds. That dude is strong. He was over 300 pounds. That dude is strong. I mean, man. look at CJ Cummins with Rogue. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 just think if we hits, he's just Olympic lifts, but put him in right. some CrossFit. Yeah. So that's a, so that's our little preview of who we think. I mean, the guy's 165 pounds and can almost or throw 100, 300 look, man, pounds. Now. I don't need I don't need you throwing out numbers to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 210. I can only squat to that 205, maybe, maybe, but it's all technique, all technique. So. CrossFit games start this Thursday. Y'all going to be watching? You going to have a computer set up at work, Nick? August 1st and runs through August 4th. August 1st through August no, 4th. I will not have my computer set up at work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tried to set you up. I'm trying to set you up. No, I ain't going to do that. So watch the CrossFit games, man, people. Uh, 
hopefully we could get on again and do a, a post game. I think this year is going to be pretty interesting uh, with this new format. That's right. what I meant. Everybody's had their panties in a wad about this new format ever since it's been announced, and all year <laughs> long it's been so controversial. When I think that by the time all this stuff plays out, that it's going to end up being a more entertaining uh, event. Everybody's all all worked up about the ever half the field getting cut. I think what happens is it's everybody's worried that someone good, one of your top, a handful of your top guys are going to get punted after the first workout or two workouts. If they do, they deserve it. I mean, it's true, right? That's what they work for right. all year is to be think the best. Think about it like this. Everything. You go into the uh, NFL playoffs. What happens if you lose the wild card game? You're done. You go home. <laughs> that is true. And it's going to be a – I'm interested to see what that first workout is going to be. How can you manage to put 140-something athletes through a workout? What think, is it going to be? I think it's going to be really diverse. I think it's going to have a little bit of everything to, to really – It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it will. So that's the CrossFit Games, folks. Tune in. Well, hopefully we can get Jack again. If I could get that, pull that in the studio and Nick back in here, we could do a a, a post game of the first day and do a recap of the actual CrossFit Games itself. So working long hours and hitting the gym afterwards, you know, it might be a late show. <laughs> hey man, late show. It don't matter. Go want, straight gotta, to YouTube. Gotta want it. Hey, we just got to be done by nine so we can hit hit the bed. I mean, we're <laughs> pushing thirty minutes. Got to be asleep. Thirty minutes of sleep. So, uh, anything else, guys? Anything? Any of the final thoughts on the CrossFit Games? What they got? What they got? What can they? What can the people expect? First time people. What can they expect? Well, first, you got to figure out where you're going to watch it. It's only going to be online. That's weird. Where can you watch? It? I don't even know where you can watch it at now. Then they, then they, have uh, a live feed. they gonna have a lot of feed. Yeah. Okay. And the way they did it this year was the uh, CrossFit is putting a live feed out there that anybody can get. Like we could, we could pick this live feed up and have our own commentary CrossFit over it. game show. Do you have to pay for that? No. What? No, they o- they open it up to everybody. Yeah. We might have to do that, that. <laughs> Let me get, let's get, uh, where's Morales at? Morales, he'll, he said he was going to come through and help us produce today. Morales, we're going to have to get this show going and do our own commentary on the CrossFit games. We can figure this stuff out. So, And we could dumb it down and make it simple for the average person to watch and understand what's going on. But if you listen to um, to the all these announcer guys, Roy McKernan and um, uh, shit, I'm drawing a blank right now, they have their own podcast. Is it beyond the whiteboard? No, not no, no, beyond no, the whiteboard. No, no. Uh, Talking Elite Fitness. Talking Elite Fitness. But I heard it was going to be with the Rogue. The Rogue has a. Uh, I heard they Rory McCurry and them. They all got picked up by uh, Rogue right. for they yeah, for yeah, their yeah, views. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But um, that's what I was saying. Just you know, listening to these guys talk, the problems that these people that are picking up this free broadcast is going to have is you're not going to. To be a uh, to be a commentator, it's going to be really really difficult to produce a really good show because you're not going to have a lot of control. You don't know what camera is going to be pointing where. True. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, In regards to like, you can't control like, hey, producer, go to this shot. Hey, go to that shot. Hundred percent right. freestyle. Yeah. So it's almost like it's better just to uh, don't go in. Don't go into watching this thinking it's going to be like the previous years. Now, I think maybe in another year or two, it will be, and it's probably going to be better. But it's I, kind of like the, it's going to be kind of touch. It's kind of like the year of uh, just testing everything out. Right. So it's almost like it's better for people to just almost record it and then do playbacks and do highlights more or less than try to jump in and, and do the actual commentary for the live yeah, feed. Can, yeah, do it delayed. Um, we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. We've got All a lot right. of people out there working hard. All right, folks. Well, that's episode nine. Masters of Fitness podcast, the uh, CrossFit Games, kind of give you guys a brief introduction of how the CrossFit Games work, what it actually is, and me and Thad just needed another excuse to do a show on CrossFit. That's it. So we try so we try so hard not to do straight CrossFit shows on every other episode that we do. So we figure once every couple of months we could drop in and talk about a little CrossFit every now and then. So, but you can find me at EJ underscore Doyle. On Instagram, Nick, where can the people find you at, Nick? Uh, Nick Schwarzenberg. Spell that out. So people no, not long, going it's a know, long one. People, people will not yes. know how to spell Schwarzenberg. Schwarzenberg, it's S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z-E-N-B-U-R-G. 
You got that, people? B U R G. Go to your phones, hit that, rewind at, fifteen at, seconds, at, at and, then, and then listen to it again. Thad, what can they find you at that? You can find me on Facebook under my name Thad King and uh, Instagram at, at King Thad. At King Thad. Also, don't forget to download the podcast on Apple iTunes. Google Play, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever you guys are listening to your podcast. Check the show out, download, give us a good listen. Uh, we appreciate everyone who live watches the show on Facebook. You could also find us on YouTube at Master Fitness on YouTube. Give us some views, give us some likes, subscribe to the page, download, listen, and we appreciate your time and peace out. Cue the cool drop. Drop, drop.